Hi, welcome to RV Afterlife. Uh, we are getting ready to explore Big Bend National Park. As it, you can see by the sign. Yeah, uh, the sign. <laughs> and uh, this is a uh, pretty cool uh, April morning, so it's 55 degrees outside. Uh, we started off in sweatshirts and jackets, but uh, uh, it's supposed to get up to 80 today. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, we've really only got one full day here, so um, we'll see what we can find. Scenic byways are the order of the day. <laughs> yeah, and visitor centers. And, yeah, yeah. and we do hope to get down to the Rio Grande, so um, let's go. This is called an Indian paintbrush. There's several other names for it, but don't let looking at that distract you from the very unique mound out there. You can see Roger walking out. I think he's going to get a close-up picture, so I'll uh, have a better picture to put in the campground. I'm sorry, <laughs> into the video. Uh, but of course, my priority usually is looking at this cool flower. We have no idea what this mound is. It's not even on the map. It looks like we are only maybe a week away from the bloom season on the cactus. But there's what uh, a flower on it looks like. It looks like it's about ready to bloom any time. But I've not seen purple cactuses before. Let me get out of the shadow. Um, and there's the same cactus with a totally different color bloom on it. But if I step back from it, you can see the purple hue. It looks like a prickly pear, but it's purple. And I have seen more that are deeper purple. Ah, here we found one of those truly purple cactus. Looks like it might have some little flowers coming up soon, but those are some mighty nasty looking spikes and here's a cactus a prickle pear i believe with a lot more of the blooms on it beautiful in a very dangerous way we're not going to take this trail but apparently there is a fairly decent uh, hike with just a little bit of elevation that goes back to the Mule Ears Trail. But you can see the Mule Ears from here. Well, we've heard that there's a really good restaurant at the Chiso Mountain Lodge. And although that would be fun, uh, we opt normally for uh, <laughs> tailgate picnics or when we can get lucky enough to score a picnic table then we somebody can't wait yeah yeah it's afternoon and i haven't eaten today so it's time for lunch tuft canyon uh, is a very short hike from the parking lot and although i would love to tell you that my microphones were malfunctioning i'm gonna claim it's probably operator error so unfortunately none of my audio came out but I didn't want to pass up showing this uh, canyon. It is um, wheelchair accessible so no matter what your abilities you can get back there. As you can see it, it kind of winds around and we could hear people talking from inside the canyon long before we saw people from um, the lookout point. So like with all desert hikes, you want to make sure you have plenty of water with you, no matter how short the hike seems to be. But uh, it was uh, very cool in a desert kind of way. Look real close and you can see a few people walking down there. Roger is the one who spotted this from the road and we managed to pull off and sneak up on what turned out to be horses. Now, of course, we thought they were wild horses. And if you look real carefully to the right of that brown horse, you'll see there's a colt laying next to its mother. I think we got a few uh, clips of the colt, but there were no fences. So they were free ranging. And, uh, but then there's a, 
a better glimpse of the colt and in a minute you're going to see that sweet little colt got close to his mom and posed for me total highlight one of the things i thought was really cool about big bend national park was the diversity of the mountains they were sometimes they were orange and black sometimes they were rusty colored and then as you can see i don't know what kind of stone that was but it was almost white uh, there were quite a few plateaus. I mean, it was really very diverse. The Santa Elena hike is about 1.7 miles long. This is the Santa Elena Canyon overlook. You can barely see it a little bit, but right out there in the middle where you see that light green, that's the Rio Grande River. Well, there's a crazy amount of vehicles down here, so it looks like this is going to be the closest we get to the canyon. The canyon Trail. We're looking at the Rio Grande River. Obviously, it's not real deep here this time of the year. Um, but across the uh, river on the left-hand side of the camera is Mexico. And we are standing in the United States. And as you can see in some places right now, you can walk across it. But based on the depth of some of these holes, I'm guessing that if it's the rainy season, you sink in, your, in the mud up to your knees in this. Beautiful scenery of the Rio Grande with the Chisos Mountains. This is the Santa Elena Canyon, and people raft through the canyons. Looks like there's a trail that takes you up. Yeah, but how far does it go? Right there? I don't know. Looks like it goes up to the top of that lookout. Gonna do it. Last night when we got back from Big Bend, uh, the wind had started whipping around. Uh, it was going to be difficult, if not impossible, to do any kind of a closing. So we thought we'd wait till the next day, get a shower, look better in front of the camera. Um, and then, yeah. So a little bit about our day yesterday. Uh, first of all, we left at like 9.20 in the morning, it was 51 degrees and it had warmed up to 51. I think it started off overnight at 40. 40. So it had warmed up, so you know we were not looking ahead and we both wore long pants. Roger at least did take a t-shirt so he could change out of his long sleeve shirt. But during the day, it got up to 85 uh, and sunny. It was really sunny. I thought it was just 80. Uh, well, when we were at uh, the Rio Grande, I looked at the uh, thermometer, it was 85. So anyway, a couple things, we drove, what was it, 229 miles yesterday. So when you're staying in Marathon, you are at least 70 miles just from the entrance of the park. Um, and then from the entrance to the, sec the main visitor center, mm -hmm. it was another 23 miles? Yeah, it was a long ways. And then from that visitor center to the Rio Grande, which was why we really wanted to go. Uh, it was another 30 miles, so it was a huge day. 229 29. miles total round trip. So we opted to only do it one day. Um, and what we did uh, enjoy about the park was it was cool to be on the Rio Grande. It was nowhere near as grand of a river as I had envisioned it. It's the only place in the park that we did see water. Yeah, it was the only place. Lots of river beds, lots of warnings for flooding. We got um, yelled at by a park ranger. <laughs> yeah. well, I did. We saw what we thought were uh, wild horses. Roger did end up seeing a brand on one of them, but they were just running loose, so they might as well have been wild horses. So we pulled off on a, a wash area, and when we were pulling back out, the park ranger yelled at him. She didn't yell. 
She was inquisitive. She, yeah, she inquisitive about yeah. your behavior. What was I doing? Did I drive <laughs> up that wash? <laughs> yeah. No, we just parked in it. But so, what were your thoughts on the day? Um, I know we've talked about it already, and, and I know the way you feel, but I don't. To me, it's not a must-do trip. I mean, if you can somehow swing it into or make it part of another trip or another destination, but I don't even think that's possible. It's so far out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think, knowing what I know now, probably wouldn't do it again. Okay. And that's why I was determined that we were going to get down to the Rio Grande because I've been like nagging to come here for three years already. And so we finally made it. And so I figured we better do what we really want to do because I know somebody who's not wanting to come back. Um, he's well, not a fan of the desert. No, I mean the first thing we did when when we got in, got into this campground and opened up our slides was trail our hand across the top of the island and it was already sandy. And we didn't have windows open. That was just what came in through the door. It was so windy. Our first night here it was probably 40 mile. well it was 40 At mile least. an hour gust and our camper was really rocking so it's uh, and then we noticed that they do seem to have wind kick up almost every afternoon, probably about four o'clock, it starts getting windy again. We did see wild animals as almost, well, even before we got to the park, we saw a small herd of deer. Uh, we saw a javelina, which we didn't get a good look at it. Uh, some other people were stopped, but we didn't see it in time, but it's kind of a pig looking animal. Um, there was a third thing we saw. Oh, the roadrunner. Down at one of the trailheads, there was a roadrunner that seemed totally okay with everybody just gathering around taking pictures of it. Uh, but that was really the only uh, wildlife that we Didn't saw. Any wily coyotes? <laughs> no, we were looking for them. Um, <clears throat> seemed like we had more things to say about it. We're here. Um, the first part of April, and I think if you would waited a couple more weeks, the, the desert would have been in bloom. Almost all the cactuses had big blooms on them ready to buds. go, buds. Yeah. Um, there were not very many crowds, but I think it might be past the That's spring break time. Um, the uh, infrastructure is not there for big crowds. Yeah. Everything's two lane roads. Uh, Narrow small, two lane roads. Small parking lots. At the, at the visitor center and the uh, trailheads and attractions along the way. So it's a good thing that there weren't any more people than there were. We would have wound up doing another Zion. <laughs> well, as it was, one of the more popular places to see is the St. Helena trailhead that leads down to the uh, river. And we circled the parking lot for, what, three times, two times, and then we left, and then we came back, uh, much to somebody's chagrin. Uh, she always gets her way. <laughs> I don't. Uh, but we circled around there. I mean, that was one of the reasons I wanted to go. Um, and so we circled around probably three times, maybe four, before we were lucky enough to snag a site big enough for our truck. So I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward the fact that, yes, I'm really glad we came. This is a beautiful country. I too am not that crazy about the desert, but I do see the beauty in it and, uh, and did enjoy going to Big Bend, but it was a long day. We were gone for, what we say, eight hours and, uh, and you know, Marathon is not a destination town. Uh, they've got a coffee shop and a hotel in town, plus this motel, and um, I think a few a few other businesses, but an emporium, I saw that. Um, but it's not some place that you're going to go and spend a week or more. Not unless you hike. Um, and this season, uh, because of a, a problem I'm having with my foot, we are not doing a lot of hiking. Um, so I think uh, there are three main aspects of Big Bend National Park. And most of what you can do here is hiking. Uh, not just uh, there's one scenic drive and uh, it, well, it was pretty, more than the one it was only one labeled on the on the map well where we went to uh, the the Rio Grande the way we went and if we went the other way out of the uh, Panther Junction Visitor Center we would have gone to another uh, Rio Grande village yeah okay well with that we're gonna call this a day did you mention the dark skies 
Oh, no, I didn't. For here? Yeah. Separate video. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then keep it under wraps. Okay, I will. All right. Well, we will see you next time. See ya. Bye.